What's happening, everybody? Welcome to the show. We are your hosts, Chase and Miles, and of course, we are at the Lucky Duck. Welcome. Yes. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to season two finale. So sad. So sad, but don't worry, because right around the corner, season three. We've been renewed. We found out last night. Yep. We were doing this episode. We had a whole script Mm -hmm. about how it was the last episode. We weren't getting renewed, and it all changed overnight. The executive producers were kind of holding out. They wanted to make sure we could secure funding, and the last minute, we did, and here we are bringing the good word to the great people of the internet. Let's just say that Fox News just got some extra funding. (laughs) Yeah. Let's just say (laughs) that there's a salary cap that just got severely opened up at the Fox News Network. So this is now brought to you by Fox News. Also, CNN. We're currently in a bidding war between, but we have LOIs on both sides, so we know we're at least, at the end of the day, going to land somewhere soft. Yeah, between... Seven and ten dollars. Yeah, let's be honest. Yeah, but hey, that's okay because uh, we're still enjoying doing this, and we hope you guys are enjoying listening. So, Miles, uh, what are we drinking today? So today we're drinking a Campari mixed with Topo Chico. Yes, I don't know what the actual drink name is. I think it's called the Floridian. Well, we all know 2023 is the year of the Negroni. Okay, yes. everybody. If you go to a cocktail bar, that's on the menu right now, okay? It is. We all saw espresso martinis hit the market in 2022. That was the big thing. 2023, the year of the Negroni, okay? I don't know if that's true. It's true. How do it's you know? true. Not worried about it. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so, is it? we, it is, yeah. That's what people say. That's what people say. Listen. We featured Negroni on an earlier episode of the season, and we're so happy to bring back the classic offspin of Negroni, the one and only Americano. Now, you must be thinking, Americano, isn't that a coffee drink? Mm -hmm. Sure is. But in the cocktail world, what it means is simply Campari, sweet vermouth, and sparkling club soda. So... Today's episode is brought to you by Topo Chico, the one and only refreshing beverage of At The Lucky Duck. I try to use this everywhere I can. I drink it every single day. I love it. It's awesome. I'm going to use it in the cocktail. So when I saw this specific cocktail come on my my discovery on the different social medias, I said, hey, we're going to do that for the season finale because I love it. Like I said, it's the year of Negroni. We're going to combine the two, and here we go, the Americano. And of course, it falls under our motto here, which is making simple drinks that you can make at home. Okay, That's perfect. Three ingredients, folks. Three simple ingredients. Club soda, sparkling water, whatever you want to use. Make sure it's got bubbles, Campari, and sweet vermouth. And a little something special that you'll only find out about if you get the At The Lucky Duck cocktail book. Boom. Coming at you season three. Boom, boom, boom. And of course, you can catch all of our great looking cocktails and how to make them on our Instagram. Yes. So you don't need the book. So, Miles, season two. What a wild ride. Yeah, I feel like um, I got brought up to 100% back down to 25%. That's about where I'm at now. It's where I started. Mm. Um, I feel like my career is failing, Mm. and this is all I really got, so I'm glad we're getting to season three. Season three is going to bring so much more, but season two, looking back, was just enormous. That was it was it was we we deal we dealt with the Ukraine war with Russia. We dealt with with uh uh we dealt with fucking 5G. We 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 brought we brought some mystery Denver facts of different graveyards and parks and we even brought to you 23 Tasty cocktails. Twenty three. Ooh, is that how many episodes we did this? I season? think so. Wow. This is officially episode fifty two. 
Wow. People, you are looking at stars right now. Mm, yum, 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 yum. Um, yeah, I feel like we had a pretty crazy year. We had a lot of folks on at the beginning, uh, partly way through. Chase said, you know what? Fuck all those people. I didn't like any of them who were on. We're doing this on our own. Yeah. And that's where we're at now. Yeah, figured, figured um, you know, in the interest of produ- producing more episodes and not having to worry on people's schedules and and times and having everything overlap perfectly to get people in, we'll still bring you the occasional guests. You know, I think season three, I'm excited to say that Michael Butler will be on. What? Who's that? Pion, 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 pion. He's a PhD doctor in neuroscience. Whoa, whoa hold on. I do the intro. <laughs> okay, let's <laughs> calm down. Damn, I think I just stepped on your contract a little bit. You did. Uh, we went through the Kanye West era. Oh, my God. He's back. He's back. I mean, he's not back, but he's not. He's not not back. He's not. He he likes Jews again. Let's he just say loves that. Jews. Since we last reported on the Kanye situation, he has seen the light, and by the light, I mean he has seen Twenty One Jump Street, <laughs> which apparently has produced this, um, shall we call, uh, immaculate revolution, yeah. revelation rather, yeah, for Kanye. He's he's a bad guy still. I'll say that. Pretty pretty not okay with me still. Yeah. His music's pretty good. You know I that uh that song um uh <laughs> I can't say the word but in uh, Paris, you know what yeah. I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh I saw on the social medias uh, a version where they took Biggie Smalls voice and replaced Jay-Z. Yeah. And it was pretty good. Oh yeah? Yeah. Better. I don't know because I like the original version a lot. Yeah, it's a great song. Yeah, um, but the AI was able to basically emulate Biggie's voice pretty well. Yeah, it helps when whoever you're emulating the original content sounds kind of like what sure. the person you're trying. Like uh, then they had, um, then they had uh, what's his face? Uh, who's the other guy that also died in that that exchange? There's Biggie Smalls, <clears throat> and then there's, oh, Tupac. Yeah. So they, they emulated Tupac's voice over Kanye's lines, and it didn't really sound as good, in my opinion. Hmm. Um, I wonder because why. Kanye has a particular style, I think, sure. in, that, in, that, in that song, at least. I feel like it's that I haven't heard, I actually haven't heard AI generated music. Pretty good. I've heard, like, I heard part of the Joe Rogan one mm. that it did, that With someone did. Yeah. Mm hmm. Which I thought was pretty crazy, and uh, but I haven't heard music. I feel like that is pretty difficult. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, people talk a lot, but well, I guess if you're a musician, then you have a lot of. It must be easier because they've recorded a lot. But still, there's so there's so much pitch, different mm-hmm. tunes. Yeah, it's it it's really hard. You have to have like a lot of uh, content to source from. Mm. Like they did Michael Jackson with. The weekend, but they sound really similar. So it was hard to be like, "Huh, yeah, that definitely sounds like MJ." Yeah. There's some parts where you're like, "Yeah, that's M- that sounds oh, so like they MJ." Replaced the weekend's the, voice with Michael Jackson. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Pretty interesting. Another one was um, Freddie Mer- Mercury and yeah. um, another song. I can't remember. Maybe it was a Michael Jackson song, and that okay. one sounded pretty good. Although there's tons of recordings of Freddie Mercury, so so you could have a cover of pretty much any song now by your favorite artist. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess I don't know. I've played around with the voice AI stuff, and it's hit or miss. It it really depends on like the source content and like what's available. They have to like train. You have to like feed it content. It'll train the AI, and then. I've done one where you you can like feed it in real time like your voice, and then it'll overlay. Like I did, I was working on a project where I needed Michael, uh, not Michael, uh, Morgan Freeman, <laughs> and so I I did that. That was pretty cool. Yeah, 
Yeah. So you fed it Morgan Freeman, Morgan Freeman's voice? No, it had already. It was like a preset. Oh. They had already, somebody had already uploaded uh, tons of Morgan Freeman content. Yeah. And so you, that was one of the ones you can like upload your own, or you can choose from like an already established library yeah. of voices, like famous people. Like Is that Obama. legal? Obama. I think they're still trying to work that out. I saw. I'm not really sure what that. What that. I. Yeah. Go ahead. I saw an article headline, and it said. Mm -hmm. If you want to stop the AI threat, release the lawyers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think there's this like soccer player where they like used him in an ad. It was like a deep faker and AI generated content and he's suing. In an ad? Yeah. yeah. Like a foreign company or something? or Something. something, I, something I, uh, I'll, I'll admit that I didn't d dive too much into it, huh. um, but I think you're going to see that a lot. You know, there's people who've already released rights to their their voice and likeness, like Bruce Willis, who obviously has a traumatic uh, or a, um, a a disease that you know for basically forced him into retirement. So he released the rights for anyone? No, to a specific company. Yeah. Okay. So they can make movies and to shit. basically make content with his his like personality is likeness basically so he makes his money voice. off of it yeah it would be his family that's crazy yeah mm -hmm. yeah his family right because yeah. he has a uh, alzheimer's no, no he I'm has sure. um can you look this up because i don't want to fuck it up in respect uh, of him and his family but um yeah he has a basically a degenerative um disease oh i thought it was something more common oh i guess it somewhat is so it's frontotemporal Dementia. Okay. Yeah, so it's basically dementia. Some kind of dementia. Yeah. Damn it, we need Michael on. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's it's a shame. Uh, really sad. And I hope... That's yeah, crazy. Hope that he lives the rest of his... Uh, his The remaining years he has in in uh, bliss and all that good stuff. But... Um, poor guy. Yeah, like poor 67. guy. Yeah. A little too young. Yeah. Anything above... Or below like 78, 75, I think is is too young. It's just yeah, a shame. for he, sure. Maybe he'll live. I don't know what, what the general yeah, I think, life expectancy he has left, but it's just like quality of life. I think that's what it is, yeah. Is like super. Because I think it's already pretty bad. Yeah. But I mean, you got to, I feel like you could argue that he had a pretty good life, right? Yeah, I think you could I say mean, that. It's. He's beloved by maybe he millions. hated acting, <laughs> but he got to act in probably some of the coolest movies. Some that of the he best ever movies ever made. Yeah. The fucking Lethal Weapon. No yeah. wait, that's not that's not it. I'm sorry. Die Hard? I'm thinking of Die Hard. Yeah. yeah, Die Hard. Everybody loves that movie. Um, what's what's the? I was gonna say. Uh, uh, what what what's the one with Tracy Morgan? He's, he's it's like cops or something. It's like not one of his famous movies, but I wanted to throw it out as a joke. <laughs> I have no um, idea. No, great. I mean, Hollywood would not be the same without Bruce Willis. Let's just let's just get that out of the way. I mean, yeah. Jesus Christ. One of the great action movie stars of all time. I mean, Pulp Fiction. Fucking Pulp Fiction, bro. The Sixth Sense. Yeah, Sixth Sense. Damn, that's, that's a good one. I actually didn't see that movie until like five years ago. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because I... Did you guess it? Yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. And actually, I watched it and was pretty disappointed. I didn't know anything about it. I had always seen it in the library when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, so I knew what what the movie was. And okay. then I just was like, I have to watch this. I feel like it's part of pop, pop culture. Yeah. And so I watched it and I was like, that wasn't that good. But I could see in like 1999, 2000 <laughs> yeah. that... It. I would have probably had a different perspective on it. Yeah, M Night had a good run for a while. Mm -hmm. He had so Excuse me, Signs. I re I recently watched that one. It, it holds up. That was a good one. Yeah, Sixth Sense. Then he started doing like Lady in the Water. That kind of that bombed. Yeah, and a couple other ones that were just really. You're just like, what are you doing? Like we, I see where you're going with this, but also like, I don't know. Uh, I think he was just, people were throwing money at him. You know, you make a couple yeah. of really good, um, you know, uh, high box office hits and so suddenly doors just fly open for future projects, you know, especially I'm, in that industry. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, 
He's got quite a few movies that he's done, so you gotta you're gonna have some bad ones. It's like Nicolas Cage. He has he has uh, some movies that people just love, like mm-hmm. cherish, and he's arguably a really good actor. Yeah. But he has he's done so many movies that yeah. there's so many bad ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's admitted that he had to do that because uh, of his of like um, spending the spent. Well, that he overspent and he leveraged a lot of his wealth in real estate. And then when 08 happened, oh. it completely fucked him. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah. So that's why he has a bunch of... Because it, it happened like after that, right? All it of a sudden, did, yeah. he was in just a bunch well, of I random I think that shit. was like the straw that broke the camel's back because he's also like admitted to buying... Making just... Horrible. Horrible yeah. purchases. Like he bought this like shrunken... Like, you know, the shrunken heads that you yes. can... that you, Yeah. He bought one for like... A few million dollars, and then yeah. suddenly the government was like, "Hey, you can't take that because it's like historical property." Yeah, and didn't he have a T Rex hat or something? <laughs> yeah, like that and then too? they like took it back, <laughs> yeah. and they were like, "It's like," yeah. and he didn't get his money back. Right? I mean, there's like a, a, a few instances. I've seen his grave, his or his uh, not his grave, his like burial, yeah, planned site, in New it's Orleans. Like this, yeah. yeah, it's this big white pyramid. I think I've talked about it before. Yeah. It's wild, yeah. He just like spent that's so much money. I feel like it's genius to spend a bunch of money on your afterlife because then people will, will remember you more, right? <laughs> like this is Nick Cage's estate. Like imagine if you built, if you just if you were a billionaire and you built a skyscraper in New York, and you were like, this will stay empty, mm-hmm. and I will be buried in the building. <laughs> And everyone will always know. And like on the outside, you just write your name. There's a sign yeah. that just says your name, Nicolas Cage. Yeah. I wonder if like if somebody like Jeff Bezos uh, or of equivalent in wealth could just do that. Set aside like 150 years worth of taxes owed. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just prepay your taxes or something or yeah. set aside like an estate to just completely manage that just and just... It. An empty building in the middle of Manhattan. It's right. like nobody's allowed in. I feel like you're buried on the top floor. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you're like in a glass casket. Like imagine explaining involved. that to the the board of whatever in yeah. Manhattan. They'd just be like, "We're not doing like, this." No. <laughs> like that's a, so wasteful. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think you could probably get away with it. Now you could money. because uh, of the office vacancies. Oh, well, that's true. They're, they're like, like you want to spend money? Sure. They're like, oh. So just another empty building, just like everything else. Yeah, they're like we. There's like a hundred of those, so you can just yeah. buy one. <laughs> yeah, they're actually really cheap right now. Actually, not, not really. Still really expensive, <laughs> but nobody's in them for yeah. some reason. That's okay. In in Denver, I saw that there's like twenty three thousand empty apartments. Yeah, I wanna I wanna fact check this at some point. Yeah, because if it's true. I'm going to find out where they are and <laughs> bid very low. Yeah, be like, listen, I know you say online that this is going for this, <laughs> but how do you feel about this number, 50% off? Because, you know, something I thought would be really smart if you're if you're uh, one of those big apartment buildings yeah. uh, is instead of when you go online and you look at what's available online, instead of just listing all the available things you have, you just list like, one or two apartments of every floor plan, mm. right? Mm-hmm. And then as soon as one goes, you just list the next one just yeah. to make people think there's a demand and then you can keep the rents higher. I think that's what my place is doing where I live because they frequently just have one place available. There's always mm-hmm. like one apartment available. Yeah, with uh, you create demand with scarcity. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I could totally see that. But I feel like there's probably more... They're like, wait, I know for a fact you have four empty apartments. Mm. Well, <laughs> we're renovating the three. Right. So we can only lease the one. Yeah. One of them has to be repainted. It's us. I'm yeah. just saying it. It's us. Saying. It's us. <clears throat> you know what else is sitting empty across the United States? San Francisco. And sanitizers. Okay. Units. Yeah, I know. It's super annoying. I go to 7-Eleven and pump my gas and I'm like, I'm not gonna like. I need to clean my hand after I touch this nasty ass yeah. gas handle, yeah. gas pump. And so I look over, and it's like there's a big sign that says hand sanitizer, and then an arrow that points down to the little uh-huh. hand sanitizer dispenser. Uh-huh. Dispenser, but there's nothing in it. Yeah, pissing yeah. me off. Yeah, across America right now, there are probably like a million empty hand sanitizer like 
units like those either the pump ones or the the automatic ones Mm -hmm. just like everybody beefed up during the pandemic you know got to be safe got to make this an area where uh people can feel comfortable going to and then just never filled it up because the pandemic went away isn't it so gross when you go to one of those and you actually press down on the thing and nothing comes out and you're like fuck i just touched the same thing that Every other person coming into this place touched, yeah. and now my hands dirty. Yeah, the same. the The feeling of 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 reaching under an automatic dispenser and it nothing happening is like the same feeling of like trying to um, climax and not being able to. You know, <laughs> just almost. a frustrating, it's not that similar, <laughs> but <laughs> experience. Yeah, we're like, uh, yeah, when you do the soap and it goes, and a few bubbles go. Is it- it's like, yeah. like a breath of uh, it's like and you're like, you're like oh, oh what am i gonna do with this i didn't need to clean pretty my sure hand. this just made me dirtier than <laughs> yeah than exactly clean. there's so much bacteria in there <laughs> and actually this reminds me i had this thought today how many people do you think in the world mm. at any given time are getting off an elevator on the wrong floor yeah yeah it could that could that could be yeah you know what i mean Mm because usually it's like okay Mm -hmm. hit lobby you're going down someone it stops at the second floor it doesn't say second floor so you're thinking oh it's the lobby you just walk out the elevator right and then you're like oh wasn't supposed to get off here and everyone laughs at you and then you get back in the elevator and you go down all the time yeah think about if you do that all the time how many people do it every second right now there's a guy that just got off the wrong floor. Yeah. Right now. And, and now another guy. Another guy. Mm-hmm. And now another We should guy. do how many people get off an elevator on the wrong floor.com. And it's just yeah. a counter of how many people have done it. You know? Yeah. It would probably, um, I think at the end of the day, it'd be in like, the, like a million, like a million, I think like across. So a million in one day. Yeah. 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 Or, or or a million at the end of the day. At the end of the day. So like Across at the end the of world. any day. Yeah. So at some point there's gonna be a million at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah good job. I went to Milwaukee a few weeks ago, which if you're asking me why did you go to Milwaukee, I would be like Fun fact. Because Milwaukee has a horrible problem with Hyundai Sonatas being stolen. Do they? Yeah. Is that the number one I think that was, Hyundai stolen city? I think that was where the trend started. Really? The Kia they boys or whatever. Yeah. They were like, damn. I can't remember what the statistic up. was of how many Hyundais and Kias were stolen per day, but it was like, are there even that many people yeah. who have those cars? That car was stolen twice in one day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Must have been. Yeah. So why, what were you doing in Milwaukee? I was meeting an equipment supplier. Okay. But- it's a weird. It it, it was it, the, fi- the the town was fine, but it seems to remind me a little bit of like Detroit, where it was like the the working blue collar man city. You know, it's the city of Miller Lite, Miller Lite, Milwaukee. Yeah, I saw Miller Lite everywhere. Signs for it, advertisements, billboards, neon signs, just everywhere. Um, and then you also saw like just like houses that. Probably have been sitting there for like 50 years that haven't been tended to. Mm-hmm. Just kind of like one side of the house is sloping down. The porch is basically falling off the front. And you're like... Do people live there? I don't know. That's the thing. It's like, you know, who what does live here? Reminded me a little bit like that was uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. <clears throat> not, oh, okay. Not the whole thing, but parts of it that. that you go through yeah. is kind of like that, where it's like a street of houses that... Just look like nobody is living in them. You think about it, and it's like, if you do not maintain your house, it will be eventually become that, right? And then, and then it just, when somebody comes to buy it, eventually, if that ever does happen, like, what do they do? Do do they like tear it down? Do they? I think the hope is that that the amount of time that that house has been there, it's been built up around there, right, mm-hmm. and gentrified. Yeah. So that that lot is now worth more than the house and then they just some of these the home. some of these areas though where industry moves out yeah that never happens you know you know it's crazy um 
Stellantis or Stellantis or whatever, the company that owns Jeep Chrysler Dodge, I think. Is that the name of that? Stellantis, I think Stellantis? it is. Stellantis? I've never heard of that. So. I just know it. I thought it was Chrysler was the name of the company that owned all those brands. No, it's... So I, I think it was, and then they were bought by or merged with Stellantis. So what is Stellantis? It was just a capital investment company? It's an automobile corporation. Yeah, but like... Yeah, I think it's like a holding company for okay, those, gotcha. those brands. It was just it was just made up. Yeah, so it's they formed it in 2021 uh, okay. as a 50-50 merger between uh, Fiat Chrysler and the French PSA group. PSA? Yeah. Who do they own? PSA? Yeah. Oh, so they own a lot of cars. So Public service. They own 16 brands. Oh, my God. One of them, I don't know uh, what it is. A Ab- Barth. Uh, Must be like a, European. like a European brand. Um, Alfa Rome- Romeo. Yeah, we know that one. Chrysler. Uh-huh. Dodge. Fiat. Jeep. Fiat Professional. Jeep. Maserati. Mopar. Uh, Apple. Ram. I thought Ram and Dodge were the same company. Yeah, it's like Genesis and Hyundai. Oh. It's like the same company, okay. but <laughs> it's Dodge Ram. For some reason, I thought they also owned uh, Ferrari. Yeah. But I could be Fun wrong. Fun fact. Majority, the car with the most common DUIs, meaning. Is there a Dodge? It's a Dodge Ram. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I see a lot of videos trolling Dodge Rams. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, this is what it looks like when you do- drive a Dodge Ram. And it was like some guy <laughs> in a Dodge Ram, like inches away from the car next to him, driving like 50 miles an hour. <laughs> it's like some some dick. Sorry if you do- if you drive yeah. a Dodge Ram. But uh, everyone's you must horrible. Be, it's, you must it's just most be a of the people here. <laughs> <laughs> first off, why? Yeah, <laughs> that's my first question. And also, follow up question to that is, uh, why? Yeah. Why did you get a Dodge Ram? Why? It sounded like a good idea at the time. No one knows. Did somebody coerce you into doing it? Because what you could have gotten, obviously, is a Tesla Cybertruck. <laughs> what you could have gotten was basically any other car, but you decided to get a Dodge Ram. You know, I saw this uh, company. I forget the name of it. They make those, they're basically those big trucks or SUVs that are bulletproof and shit like that. Oh, that's they're, cool. They're for like millionaires and billionaires and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And people who are trying to, uh, preppers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They look dope. Like I would totally buy one if I had tons of money. How much how much is one of these things? Um man, I can't think of the name of it. So I'd look it up, but they're they're in the hundreds of thousands. Really? Yeah. Wow. And they just got like like a titanium siding and bulletproof proof glass and something like that. Runs on biodiesel. They, <laughs> they look indestructible, yeah. yeah. Actually, you can get a non-diesel one. Oh, okay. Um it's like a V I think it's V8 that oh. they put into it. Yeah, it must be heavy as fuck. Oh, yeah, for sure. But they, I remember seeing, I think it was them, They you could do a um, a uh, deposit on their new car or something like that. Okay, it, like the, 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 the concept model that's supposed to come out? Yeah. Yeah. And it uh, like it's non-refundable. Whoa. Yeah. So I'm um, just like, really? okay, so, <laughs> yeah, crazy. Anyway, hmm. Stellantis, they, uh, they are... I think they just offered, I think it was 30,000 employees a buyout. So they need to lay off 30,000 employees and they offered to basically just give them severance? So I don't know if they have to lay off 30,000, but I think they offered 30,000. And within that, they're thinking so many thousand are going to take it. Gotcha. Yeah. I wonder what the price was. One Dodge Ram. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> God damn it, no. It's like Twitter. They're like, you get Twitter blue. Yeah, you get Twitter blue indefinitely. <laughs> you leave the company. Until didn't they start taking all the legacy blue checks? Yeah, they started taking them, they gave some some back. Okay. Yeah. Well, makes sense. And then I, I saw that they were like labeling government funded agencies and then took that away too. Yeah. After like people left. Yeah, they did um PBS, yeah. I think it was. PBS, oh. BBC, NPR was another one I mean, yeah it was npr i think a cbc state funded yeah uh, state funded organization mm-hmm. yeah. which what well, means like you get a you get x amount of like funding or grants or stipends from the government yeah i think 
Yeah, I think that was their point is to show that there's probably bias mm -hmm. because it's funded by the government. Right, yeah. Like SpaceX. Yeah, I don't know if they labeled that one as a... <laughs> Basically funded by the government. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think it, I, I think it was like news organizations. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Like journalists uh -huh. and stuff like that. It makes sense. Um, interesting. I, uh, you know what I learned the other day? Um, that supposedly, and I looked this up and I can't corroborate it, but a journalist wrote this into his podcast that streaking was invented at Florida State University. Oh, I don't know if I believe that. I don't know if I believe it either. Because I feel like streaking is a thing that's been around since cavemen existed. Right? Um, just run out of your cave. Do you remember there's a, there's a road called Tennessee? Yeah. Yeah, it runs basically east and west right i think it is i think so yeah yeah and um it it like hugs the side of campus basically and they put up a fence basically all along the side of the campus because people used to streak across that road in the 70s and so this guy was saying that that's when streaking was officially popularized <laughs> Was when they was this a journalist? That. Yeah, he did. He did, he's a the guy that does um, the Devil Within, which is basically the first season. It's a true crime podcast with like sort of a fictional slant, um, meaning like he takes some liberties and like storytelling. Mm -hmm. But he basically covers the first season and goes and covers the Jersey Devil, which I you got you probably heard of before. A lot of people have heard of the Jersey Devil. I don't know if I have. Yeah. It's really cool. Uh, the second season, he he talks about something that happened in uh, York, over in the UK. But like, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, if it, you guys are into supernatural, demon, true crime, which sounds ridiculous to say, uh, but um, he he presents it in uh, kind of a cool format. I appreciate. It. But the second season, he talks about. There's an incident where this guy's streaking, and then he talks about the history of streaking a little bit. And he said, he said, not my words, his words, that it was invented at Florida State. Okay, well, I have a source that says that the first recorded incident of streaking was in the UK at a charity rugby match mm. between England and France. I have heard that too. Uh, I actually did a little bit of research and I found that one. I found a couple other ones. There's there's like several sources. I don't think that anybody can get it right. It's like who invented the internet, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it wasn't uh, Lee Burns or whatever his name is. What is I, his name? I don't know, but yeah, there's... <laughs> Tim Lee Burns? It's all, it's all those things. Like the, Unless you have a patent for it, that yeah. was created when it was. But even if you have a patent, a lot of times it's like... You just took someone else's idea, made it a little better. You were the one that filed the patent first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of stuff like this is like, you know, history is in most times the inventor of the of written by email. The the inventor of the female of, of email. Oh, they said the yeah. female. I was like, okay, we getting religious here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, email, you're right. Yeah, wasn't it like MIT or something, Cambridge or something like that? I don't know, but it was. It was like it's the first like email. If you sent uh, a a mail or a message from one computer to another, it, it was essentially an email. Yeah. Uh, so, but like that wasn't called email at the time. No. Until no. somebody like decided to coined it, make a protocol around it. it was like right. this is what email this is. This is email. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, I know it was like used for stupid shit first except we know bitcoin is the first true cryptocurrency right for sure <laughs> for sure we can corroborate that with the guy that invented it yeah right well i mean i have his phone number i mean checks out yeah i call him sat would you be really disappointed if it was like somebody that you hated yeah, like Kim Jong Un. Yeah, or like uh, Vladimir Putin. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like it was in Hitler's manifesto. <laughs> <laughs> like somehow, like we overlooked that <laughs> for years. <laughs> like, damn, Hitler invented Bitcoin. What if that came out? Hitler invented Bitcoin. Fuck, dude. <sighs> Hitler. What would that do to the price? Oh, it, it would go down. Yeah, it would for, do sure. Down. yeah for sure. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, it wouldn't make sense because, because. Uh, I mean, people created that concept 
yeah. of the the trust system. Mm. Like, I don't know. I think in like the seventies or eighties or something. Yeah, I'm surprised Trump hasn't been like, I invented Bitcoin. Honestly, when I saw his NFTs, <laughs> I thought he was gonna have an NFT of him in a lab coat next to a computer with a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like, little do you not know. <laughs> little do you not what? know. What? <laughs> um. Yeah, why he came out with an NFT, but he didn't do his own coin. See, that's why I know it was a fraud. Trump coin? Trump coin. Or he did, we just don't know. Yeah, we would have known. Well, maybe it was we one of those. Known. Maybe he was behind all of the scam coins. Yeah. I'd believe it. I believe it too. Although, I don't know. Does he know how to use a computer? I don't know. I don't think so. He knows how to use a Blackberry, I think. Oh, does he? Well, oh, I mean, he probably does. He tweets. He, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, is that a, he does it from his BlackBerry? <laughs> I don't know if it's a BlackBerry. Damn, it's like, <laughs> 1999. I'm sure he does it from from a phone though. Blackberries was a shit. That I remember going on the on the internet on the BlackBerry phone. Yeah. Yeah. Our our dad had and the little ball you could scroll for the wheel, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, they fucked up. Yeah. They fucked up. Not have any. They'd be like, "No, no, the key the physical keyboard is king." They'd be like, "No, nah, dude." <laughs> I think their whole thing at some point at least was they were like, we're the secure phone. Yeah, they were also like, we're the businessman's phone. Yeah. I remember, I think it was one of those uh, the black hat or whatever, one of yeah. those conferences, whatever yeah. they call it, yeah. where they did a conference and someone hacked, hacked the phone yeah. yeah, while they were giving the they presentation. Were the, yeah, the present- you, know, well, you know who owns BlackBerry, right? Sony, Motorola. Oh yeah, Motorola. That's right. Yeah, it's a it's a company you don't hear from much these days. Motorola. Yeah. Uh huh. Huh. Yeah. What do they make? I mean, black. They Hardware. don't sell Blackberries anymore, right? They do. I think so. Oh. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Um. I wonder what it looks like. You should pull it up. Um. I don't know if I have if we have the laptop connected, but um. Yeah. I mean. Um. It's uh, it's like a, one of those things that it's like a product. It's like a thing of its time, you know. Like th- it had a, it had a good run, you know. Yeah, it had a good run. It's like fidget spinners, you know, or like uh, uh um, the rubber bands that you would wear. Yeah, like, silly bands. Silly bands. Yeah, like, <laughs> live strong uh, bracelets. Like yeah, that that has its own stamp of history, you know. Yeah. Um. You know, I'm on the BlackBerry website right now, and yeah? this kind of just reminds me of Radio Shack. <laughs> <laughs> Is there still a Radio Shack out there that's just like coming along, like the last Blockbuster? I don't think so. Also, what's going on with Blockbuster? Have they announced anything yet? Oh, they were going to be a company again, right? Well, yeah, they're owned by Dish Network, but they had like updated their site, being like, "Hey, we're going to rewind real quick or something. I don't know. They did some some like you, you know thing. Radio Shack jumped on the cryptocurrency bandwagon. Did they? They became like a, a trading broker or something. They created their own coin and Radio had this coin. whole platform for. Yeah, I, I don't know. If that's what it was called, but yeah, I mean, it, it wouldn't funny. surprise me. I remember I was going to buy some right at the beginning. That's when you know you're in a crypto bubble. Is when Radio Shack gets involved. <laughs> yeah. You're like, okay, I'm out. <laughs> it's time to sell. Radio Shack has officially gotten into the game i mean i think that wasn't gamestop going to try to do that um th- i don't know i yeah. thought oh no that was my idea i or our idea or my idea i can't remember that gamestop should sell should just become turn all their stores into marijuana dispensaries yeah yeah yeah. We, we, yeah you came up with that yeah um Blockbuster.com just says, we are working on rewinding your movie. They're working on it. They're working on it. Maybe they'll come up with a, their own silly band or fidget spinner. <laughs> Why would they? I just don't understand. It's funny because in recent news, because it's called Blockbuster. Wow, you went to Block... I just want to note that Miles went to Blockbuster.com and his computer com- computer fan just went nuts. <laughs> it's true. It's like, <laughs> they're working on something big in the background. <laughs> <laughs> they're just fucking programming in real time on the on that website son of my computer <laughs> stuff it took all my crypt my radio coin yeah, yeah your radio coin is gone Damn it. oh blockbuster coin that's what's up <laughs> i'm gonna get my blockbuster fidget spinner and my blockbuster uh silly band 
So on January 4th, 2022, BlackBerry decommissioned the infrastructure and services used by their legacy software and phone operating systems. They no longer make smartphones. You know, I think one could could say that the when the BlackBerry went away, and what I mean by that is when the traditional little screen on top, keyboard on the bottom, little scroll wheel in the middle, when that went away, autism cases rose sharply. So on the FAQ, there's only two questions. <laughs> One of them is, does BlackBerry still make for smartphones? And that was the answer I just gave you. Yeah. And the other one is, what does BlackBerry do now? <laughs> they just want you to ask those questions. That's really what they want to do. Yeah. They're like, we, I know we're not, you guys have a lot of questions for us. We've identified the main <laughs> two that we want to make sure is out there. Yeah. So they said, BlackBerry is a software company focused on providing enabling technologies to ensure the safety and security of all the devices and systems businesses rely on. We are pioneers in cybersecurity, encrypted voice and digital communications, automotive safety, and innumerable connected and IoT systems and devices in fields such as medical, industrial, avionics, and more, all with a common thread of intelligent security. I feel like this is like IBM a little bit. They're like, we're not really sure what we do now, but we're going to do a bunch of different little things because we have existing infrastructure and now we're just trying to pivot our teams to do something more useful. So we're going to do a bunch of different little shit. Yeah. They needed to use their name. Blackberry. Yeah. They just changed their, what they do. Hmm. Right. Yeah. It's hard to do because branding is a fickle bitch. People associate your logo, the name with a certain product or image or culture or idea. And it's really hard to change the public opinion on something. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of weird. I just would I just don't ever think of BlackBerry as a, you know, a, a company that I would go look for business for. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wouldn't. But then you have that one guy that's like hey, we do this, and they go out and they look for business, and suddenly... They said that they prevented over 165 million cyber attacks in 2021. Hmm. How so did they they're know in cybersecurity. That? Imagine if you were running a company and you're like, okay, who does your security? BlackBerry. And they're like, okay, explain. I don't know if I like that. Yeah, they're like, is it just a bunch of phones? Yeah, is it just like uh, it your server's hooked up, your server's a phone? I'm so confused. Your router is a phone? Is it going through that little keyboard that they have attached to it? I just don't know what to think about the company. I don't know. It feels like a Radio Shack to me. I think they tried to do a touchscreen one, and it didn't do well because iPhone was just killing the market. And then you had Android just dominate as well, mostly. And it just got left in the dust. It happens. It's okay. It's a cycle of life. You had your moment. You really owned it. You were the thing. You were unstoppable. You were like Wolf of Wall Street. Just the scene where everybody's jumping up and down with the midgets or the little person is like being thrown onto the dartboard and everybody's cheering and drunk and you're just, you had your moment. And now that moment's over and you're, now you're something else. And that's okay too because life is just change. It's constant flux. It's ebb and flow. It's the fluidity of reality. And you just got to go with it. And if you're standing in the way of that river of life and you're the guy that's making all the, you know, the resistance, you just got to you just got to let go, stand up and get on your little inner tube and float down that river. Don't be afraid, Blackberry. Just go with it. So I saw that Meta announced or Facebook announced that they had their first increase in sales in a year. That's good. Mm -hmm. I feel like when you... Aren't you glad I told you to buy Facebook stock? I did do that. Yeah. Yeah. And you probably made a million dollars. I made one billion dollars. Oh, you're rich. You could buy a building in New York. Remember when, remember when people were playing like Farmville on Facebook? Yeah. That was weird, right? 
Like it, Facebook tried to do the whole mobile gaming or online gaming thing. I feel like it's weird. Uh, they made so much money off of that. Yeah. Off of the gaming stuff. Yeah. And it's really, I mean, there's some people who still play games and stuff on there, but. On Facebook? I, yeah. I can't yeah. imagine it's anything like it used to be. I just wonder what they replaced that revenue stream with. Who is using Facebook for like everything? Because that's what Facebook wants you to do. A lot like, of people. Oh my God, I put my photos there. I play my yeah. games there. I interact with my community on Facebook. I am just, I'm Facebook all through and through. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of people. It's I weird. Know. I remember playing maybe one game on Facebook and I was like maybe in high school. Yeah. I think I played one of those crime games. Yeah. Where you, um, it's one of those where you could buy credits or you very, <laughs> very slowly yeah. build your empire, which is what I did. <laughs> yeah. And at one point I was like, Basically every bullshit. mobile game ever. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I noticed about mobile games, especially nowadays when, because you see them advertised all over, you know, any platform you use, Reddit, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. The ads that they're showing you is like gameplay of that game, but it's of a guy playing or a girl or non-binary playing the game but not good yeah or they're not like like they're failing at yeah it, which is like it's so fucking smart yeah it's so smart because they're they're it's wanting you to be like well i could fucking do better of than course that. like you you're not doing that you need I, to move that one over there no I, no 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 do that one because i that's exactly what i thought someone yeah. someone it has a psychology major that works. Somebody figured that shit out and now everybody's doing it. You know what else they do? Because there were so many of those ads that were fake. Yeah. It was fake gameplay. Yeah. They used another game or they just made the gameplay. It yeah. wasn't the real game. Yeah. That a lot of those ads now are someone saying, Oh, I, you know, I thought this game was fake, so I actually try, uh, decided to try it out, and it's real. I can tell you, <laughs> it's like the reaction yeah. video. Yeah, like there's, that's like a whole genre of of things now. Is like the reaction videos, and it's like the reaction video to the bat to the false advertising. It's basically it's hilarious. Yeah, I recently fell uh, victim to a false identity, gameplay identity theft. <laughs> identity theft. No. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, Call of Duty? No, it wasn't Call of Duty. It was like Agent M, not Agent Empires. It was like Origin of something. Uh, I'll, you know what? I'm gonna pull it up because I'm gonna call them out. Fuck you! Is it the one where it's the street? It's the like the bridge you're walking. Yes, on and the they shoot guys? the zombies. I don't know. Maybe he's like shoot. You get uh, Age of Origins. Fuck you, bitch. That game's fake. You still it's not even. It's a tower defense game. It's not even the fucking game that they show you on the ad. It's fake. Don't doubt. You know what? Um, y'all are hearing it. What's it called? Age of Origins. Age of Origins, and I'm deleting it right now. Age of Origins. I just deleted it, yo. We're disappointed. We're disappointed. Listen, I want the first thing that I see or play in the game to be what I see in the ad, because I don't want to get the level fifty or whatever the fuck it is to be able to play whatever you show me. Okay, just make it the game that I download. I know exactly what you mean. I know, yeah, I know you know exactly what I mean. I will kill you. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Miles is gonna kill me. I won't really. I'm not nope. gonna kill anyone. If you guys just heard that fizz, the the lovely fizz, it's the Topo Chico hitting the cocktail. Mm. So creamy, that, delicious. Okay, we not gonna do that again. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, I've, I had seen this ad for this game on Reddit for over two years now. There's still, I'm, I was, I'm shocked that this game has the, the capital to continuously yeah. advertise this to me. Continuously advertise the wrong game. I was shocked. I don't understand. I, there, there's gotta be, I mean, I downloaded it, so what, I don't know. They didn't make any money. There's got to be so many people just like me who download it after seeing the ad and then deleting it or not playing it or not using it or not buying credits, in-game, whatever purchases. Well, here's the thing. Okay. How are they making money? How are? They, I mean, I know mobile gaming is a billion-dollar industry, so they must be at least breaking even. Here's the thing. You downloaded it. I know it's not the game you saw, but did it seem interesting? I've always saw the ad and was like, I would play that. 
Yeah, but I mean the actual game. You you no. opened it and played it. No, no, no. I I I took two steps in and I was like, this is not the game that I that I saw. I'm not playing this. Mm-hmm. Like it did. Like I didn't want to engage with it because it pissed me off that it wasn't the game they advertised. Yeah. So I was like, immediately turned off. I'm like, I don't I don't want to give this this thing any of my time or energy because I feel like it's somehow slimy. What I don't you know? what I don't understand is I like why don't they make that game? The game that's in the ad. Here's the thing is like I didn't play it enough. To, maybe that's like a side mode that you play eventually, but it's a tower defense fucking game and it was completely like the 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 style of gameplay was completely different from what it was advertising. Yeah. And so I was like, "Oh, this must be some sort of like side thing that you do but why aren't you why aren't you advertising the main mode right because that's what you're going to be spending most of your time doing that's my point is why don't like they that all those ads you see are they they look really fun like Mm -hmm. really addicting Mm -hmm. and why don't they just make that game like why don't they just make that the game yeah i don't know and advertise that and say here you want because that's literally the ad I've seen yeah. where it's been like, this is the actual game. Yeah. Even though it may not be still. Well, why not? <laughs> you know what they used to do before that, before they figured out making shitty gameplay was going to lure people in was like cutscene stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It was like not the game, but just like a, a movie. Yeah. You know, right. Like, this is fuck- like, I remember um, Elder Scrolls Online put a ton of money into concepting and making the like uh, the vi- the intro video that you see when you start the game, and then everything else is just like shitty graphics. Mm. And they would use that to, as the advertisement to get people to play. Right. And it was like, look how great this game is. Look how good the graphics are. And then you actually open it up, and you're like, this looks nothing like the cutscene you showed me. Yeah. What's funny is I feel like. That's how games have been for a long time. They'd always show you the cinematic trailer. Yeah. You're like, oh, that looks so good. And then you'd always be disappointed when you played the games because you're like, yeah. the graphics are just not as good yeah. as they. And now I feel like like Call of Duty, you'll see an ad for Call of Duty and you're like, those, those graphics look kind of bad. And then you play the game yeah. and you're like, it's better. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think they either learned or the graphics caught up a little bit yeah. to where they didn't have to like embellish it as much mm-hmm. because... And also, a few games got in real big trouble. I remember when Spider Man, like the, not the old Spider Mans, but the 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 big one that came out for PlayStation. It was like Spider Man. It came out like I don't know five years ago. Okay. And then there's Miles Morales yeah. one that was kind of like the sequel to it. They released E3 footage of it, and it was like amazing yeah and then people shit on it because they're like that's not even the real thing and then they got caught so much flack so i think there's like there's like um some bad actors involved in that and they got called out and now Mm. people are like well if we be honest and we show you what it's going to look like people won't react negatively to that and so a lot of times now what i've noticed in like the newer games is they'll show you actually generated footage from the game and in fact like a lot of times when you're playing the game there's often the intro footage but it's not embellished and then and then the camera will Mm -hmm. kind of like shift down into the first person view so it's almost like you're now playing in the movie. Right. So there's no difference between the quality of the, of the of the before and the actual gameplay, which I think obviously is like due to the fact that you can um now that graphics have kind of caught up, they're closer now to where they where they were showing in these like embellished videos, but they're still not quite there, but they're like good enough to where they don't have to cheat and right. make people disappointed anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Tom Clancy's The Division. They did that. Yeah. The when they came out with their trailer, it looked like the best game I'd ever seen. The yeah. most sophisticated graphics. And then I got the game and I was so disappointed. I didn't yeah. I think I played it a little bit 
I think we all got it. Yeah. Played a little bit and then still pretty fun uh for like yeah. a few days. But yeah. the thing is too, like what they also started doing was in the bottom corner, you go to YouTube and you look up dying light whatever video like enter any video game name. Now they say gameplay running on this hardware. Mm. So they tell it's almost like a disclaimer saying, yo, like you can get this if you have this hardware. Double forty ninety. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, but like with ray tracing, extreme on, yeah. and all that. But if you have, you know, so don't don't expect to have this if you're running like a, a twenty sixty or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's great. That's that's just the transparency that the industry needed to stop pissing people off. Because we've all, I mean, if you're a gamer, you know that that community. It gets real salty real quick. Yeah, they're really good at using Twitter. <laughs> like really uh, good at shitting on people. When when the Wired uh, editor or whoever you know the writer, yeah, the journalist or whatever, wrote the bad review about Harry Potter, <laughs> but it had nothing to do with the game. Yeah, it was just because they the politics of it. Yeah, the politics yeah. and uh, it got so much hate. Yeah, and uh, I mean I stopped looking at wired i did too at, at all I, Honestly, I don't trust any of their articles yeah. anymore i i was really disappointed i was i was just kind of shocked that they would they would do something like that yeah because um, they're they're so not objective they're more of a tech i mean based on the name you can kind of tell uh i would expect magazine. somebody like cnn or msnbc yeah. to do some 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 shit like that right but like wired like or buzzfeed why does wired have to have a political leaning you guys yeah. review hardware and like do store. I mean, I know they do so much more now. Um, and I used to go, I used to visit. I stopped even before all that nonsense though. I just kind of like stopped going to journals, articles and major websites altogether. Um, yeah. But, but the thing is, even if they wanted to have some articles about that, they write it. So, you know, someone in the organization writes an article like, why I didn't like the Harry Potter game, right? Mm. Uh, from a from a um, editorial point of view or whatever, right? But it was the review of the game. It was, yeah. It was it was trying to be objective, but failing tremendously because it was overshadowed by its like preconceived notion of like the the Harry Potter series because of the way they felt about you know, right. J.K. Rowling or whatever. It would be like if. Uh, Stephen King said something that offended some people yeah. and then they made a movie or a game out of, or a movie mm-hmm. that Stephen King had nothing to do with. It's just based on his book. And then they were like, the movie was horrible. Yeah. They yeah. didn't even watch it. So, right. So crazy. <laughs> One out of 10. I, yeah, I just, I, I, yeah, I lost so much respect. Uh, I c- couldn't believe not only they let her publish that, but also the editor, chief defended editor, it. defended her for that review. Yeah. Like, uh, listen, it's okay to have your opinions about the whole, you know, thing about J.K. Rowling and the trans community, whatever that is. But this is a game review, it, and you need to be objective. Yeah. And and that's just so disappointing that they they couldn't separate the two things. But hey. Whatever, man, do what you want to do, and and there's always an audience for that type of thing. And I wish them the best of luck. But. I don't. Uh, Age of Origins, <laughs> Wired. You're both like, you're both basically the same thing to me. Yeah, yeah. Bullshit. You, uh, Wired should should uh, should um, uh, have review. a review. Review that. <laughs> yeah, like it's so good. It's yeah. just like the ad. It's just like the ad. Like a hundred percent, ten percent. In fact, like uh, yeah. yeah, it's just weird, man. That's yeah, just fucking weird. I mean, oh well. It's uh, what they say, the woke, the woke. wokeism. It's getting into our reviews. Yep. Yeah. This episode is sponsored by Bud Light. Bud Light. Bud Light. <laughs> I saw. Bud Light. I saw they had an, like a apology video, not an apology video, but a follow up video or something. Did you see that? No. Did they? Yeah, it was something saying how. Bud was created in the America, and it's like an American beer, and which they're owned by a German company now, right? They are, yeah. Yeah, so and it's Hazard not even Bush American. Is a anymore. German company. 
Yeah, they or at least they report they're a operate they operate in America, but they they uh, are owned wholly by a German company, right? Which called Imbev means that they have German influence. Like they're mm-hmm. not. I wouldn't call myself an American company if my parent company was was not American. Yeah, you know right. what I mean. Yeah, it's it's kind of tricky, especially with a company that changed. Budweiser to American like one year. Did you know that? No. Yeah, they like relabeled everything. It was just said instead of Bud Light on the label, it said American. Really? Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Which is hilarious. I wonder, and I think it was when the, it was post acquisition of M- Imbev. Oh, wow. And so I think they were maybe trying to like get ahead of people being like, you're not an American company anymore. What the fuck happened? Yeah, it kind of uh, makes me wonder that. Also, I wonder if it was InBev is what it's called. Yeah, InBev. Yeah. I wonder if they have influence, and it's one of those things where it's like they think that this is what people will like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, they own so much now. Like they they own so much. Yeah. Stella is owned by them. I mean, it's just like right. they're a massive company. And they own a Natty. lot of micro breweries too. Can we find out that that Natural Light is? Owned it's by yeah, them? Natural Light is another one. Yeah. So they own Breckenridge Brewery. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, they went in and sold bought out. up a ton of <laughs> of micro. So you just go to Total Wine and you look at the label, <laughs> yeah, of each of the beers. I would say, arguably, and I don't know, I don't have the numbers to back this up. This is just my opinion. Uh, but Bud Light was like the biggest beer, domestic beer in America before <laughs> all of that went down. Sure. It's so weird. Nobody would have thought that would happen. Yeah, the thing is, I wonder <laughs> if they make more money off of Bud Light and Budweiser. Yeah. Because Budweiser is also sold in a lot of, like yeah. every bar in America pretty much you can get it at. Yeah. Uh, that's not a craft brewery or something. Or off of all their other brands. Yeah. You know what I mean? I I really like Bud Light in a can. I'm trying You really like, like it? I like it. I like it better than in the bottle. I just don't really like it that much anymore. Really? I mean, I, I think it's pretty, pretty good. Yeah, I'll st- I like, but not. I know a lot of people are upset at it for some reason. I'm but not really into Bud really Light. Bought. I like Budweiser. If I'm, oh really? If I'm, I like Bud Light. Just yeah. drinking a beer. I I really like it. It, it. I like Coors Light too. I would probably pick Coors Light over Bud Light, but I there's re, Bud Light's really refreshing. Yeah, I don't know. I can drink a lot of them. Maybe it have yeah. Because there's like basically water. <laughs> but <laughs> that, 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 that's the thing. Yeah, I I think I will drink Coors Light. Yeah. Um, it has a, I think it has a stronger taste to it than Bud Light does. Yeah. Bud Light to me tastes more like drinking a Lacroix. It is. It has a, yeah. Slight, like a beer flavored. <laughs> beer flavored Lacroix. Yeah. Maybe that's why I like it. I don't know. <laughs> it's like Topo Chico. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I like it's. I like the logo. I like the the blue. The blue is such a recognizable blue. I like when they have the pride flag on it. Yeah, yeah, it's my favorite. Game. I bet you they ain't gonna do that anymore. <laughs> They're like backtracking and also like mm. backtracking to be like offensive too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like we hate so, trans people. So Kid Rock will uh, buy another twenty four pack. <laughs> oh, did he say something? Yeah, he like made a whole stink of it, and then uh, brought out his twenty four pack and shot it up with his uh, his AR fifteen or something like. Oh, that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, what, uh, like, what what were people mad about though? I think there was like an ad or something. That yeah, they did, that I know ran. there was an ad, but like, what it were was, they? Why were they mad about it? Like, what were they mad about? It was supporting something of this was like uh, trans people or so. I don't know. I honestly have no idea why people are. I mean, I I kind of have an idea why people are upset. Yeah, but I don't really align with that. Is it because it's like so doesn't really bother me? I'll still drink it. So it's like okay, if you're someone who thinks that like you just hate the concept of transgender. Yeah, I think it's like what you. Well, I, you and I had a conversation and I, I think I explained it well there is like, <clears throat> like the whole, the whole, um, trans, the trans thing became obviously very political, um, zeitgeist topic within the last couple of years. 
And um, I think it's it's mainly due to the fact that a lot of people, specifically on the right side of the political spectrum, didn't really care about trans activism as long as it didn't affect their lives. I think that was like the main thing. It was like, I don't care. People can be whoever they want to be as long as you, you know, don't get in my way or my freedoms or whatever. And then, and then like, you know, you had like trans athletes, uh, participating in like gender specific sports and that pissed off a lot of people. Then you had like the whole bathroom thing and that pissed off a lot of people. So the more it like seeped into like some society stuff, they were like, mm. oh, this is too far. Or like, now it's affecting my life somehow. And like, now I have to watch a Bud Light ad or whatever, the can logo, or wh- I don't know, whatever the fuck they did. Um, now suddenly it's like bothers them to a point of like protest or like, you know, boycott or what, whatever mm. they, they, they want to do, you know. Um, and I think, I think a lot of people also in that political ideology um think that they're being forced to conform to those beliefs and that's like where they draw the line yeah yeah yeah. that makes sense i think it's probably at least what i've heard from a lot of people is that um they feel that they have to be that they have to control the society that they and their kids yeah. are going to live in. Right. So they don't, they're like, I don't want my kids growing up uh, in a society where like, like two men can have a child or something like that. Right. right? Yeah. Um, and so they feel that, that, that can't be allowed to be a thing. Yeah. And something like that. I don't know. I, I, I'm of the opinion that we should create a society that's wholly inclusive of anybody and everybody. And I just think it's a real shame that some people want to basically control what you can and cannot do, because I think that's underlying or undercutting the very foundation of what it means to be American. Well, just don't tread on me. <laughs> that's the logo. <laughs> that's the that's the motto. <laughs> don't tread right? on me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right, right. That's like you have people who fly that flag around, and it makes sense. It's like yeah. don't. Uh, it's like don't step on snack. You know. Yeah. Don't, right. Don't uh, like don't take my rights. Yeah. Don't affect me. And that's it's like you can do whatever you want, but leave me alone. Basically. Which is funny now because the i think response to all of this has been quite the opposite yeah has been like well we're going to restrict what you can and cannot do well that, that's the thing i don't i don't know are so the we pe- think it's been we think it's gone too far are the people who are like that they're like the people who it's like government shouldn't be able to say what we can and can't do are they the ones that actually are or is it the people who are like no offense against like any types of religion, but who are who have religious beliefs that tell them that doing those things are is bad, and it, you know it shouldn't be something that yeah I is, think is I done. think the people who are doing making these rules and laws or legislation are religiously motivated yeah, um, and the whole thing with like kids just made this really complicated. Um, it's such a sensitive topic when you bring kids oh, into the conversation. Because the, g- the gender, what is it, affirming? Yeah, there's like the, the Florida's doing some wacky stuff. And I honestly have really haven't paid too much attention to it. Uh, I don't have like the bandwidth to really wholly understand what what's happening. I also don't live in Florida. But it's I thought you were a Disney gained adult. a lot of attention. And, uh, which I feel like is partly due to one side trying to mobilize the other. No, uh, one side trying to mobilize its army. Yeah. I don't know. For the Civil War? Something. I don't Mm. know. I always read something, a headline, and it sounds worse than it actually is type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. But then, you know, it's not something I particularly subscribe to. Right. Um, 
And then you try to put yourself in those, the people who it's like affecting shoes and you're like, ah, I wouldn't like that. Like effect, like what? What do you mean? Um, well, if I, if I was a, if I had a family member who was trans and they wanted to get gender affirming care as a kid or whatever, and they couldn't, or they couldn't talk about it when they wanted to. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. I think that's part of what they're trying to stop. I don't know. Yeah. I think Again, it's... I don't understand the situation wholly, but from yeah. what I've, the little tidbits of information I picked up, I think that's the, a very poorly stated gist of it. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, um, there, there was a thing where I, like your, te- your teachers aren't allowed to talk to you about it. Right. Yeah. There was that first. And then supposedly they came out with something that was like, um, that if, if you're a parent getting your children, your child treatment, uh, a fam, a family, the family can like petition to yeah. take the child away from you. Right. Yeah. It would Something be like, like the state would sponsor yeah. that. Yeah. Which is weird. Yeah, it is weird. Uh, Florida does a lot of weird things that are, that seem a little backward to me. Like, um, like this whole thing with Disney mm-hmm. and, um, wanting to control disney yeah it's 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 very it's it's just very odd you know what right? i thought about it was like because because the 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 people that they call woke yeah. are the ones trying to suppress the the first amendment the freedom of speech yeah, yeah, yeah. of other people right right like yeah. you can't say that word you can't say that phrase you can't say that thing yeah. about other people you can't have these books in this school and you can't well yeah yeah but then you have florida who's like yeah taking away books uh, an org or punishing an organization who said something, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So they stood up for some belief that yeah. the organization had, the people, the leaders in the in the company, and now that 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 company is being punished uh, for saying something that they are protected by uh, the First Amendment, yeah. which everyone else is, uh, except the woke people are trying to punish them for saying those things. You know, I was thinking the other day, I was like, who do you think has better lawyers? The Florida, the Florida government or <laughs> Disney? Disney. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, who, but who has more know? power, though, is the problem. That That's the thing, yeah. Because they have... But power is also granted between laws, right? Yeah, so for instance, um, so Florida basically said that Disney had to have this legislative board... Yeah. And then Disney came out with some ruling that they did and they were like, basically it was like, we don't have to listen to the board or right. something like that. You know, basically blocking what Florida did. And now Florida is going to use their legislation to basically overturn Disney's yeah. uh, decision to be able to do that. Yeah. And it's like, it doesn't even make sense. It's yeah. like Disney has their own government. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. I was wondering, I was like, who makes more money? Disney or oh Florida? Hmm, that's a good question. I don't know. And I, I think, I think when you when you probably look at it from a high level perspective, it's probably Florida. But then, how much of that money actually gets goes to like funding this type of thing, like lawyers and like who has more firepower? You know, in the end, like so Disney seems like a they a force to not fuck with. You know, just based on the amount of money they bring in. Yeah. So I would not want to be the guy that's standing up against Apple, who's like basically the richest company in the world, you know, or was. Right. Yeah. So uh, Disney in 2022 pulled in $23 billion in revenue. We'll go back to 19 because 2022 is a recovery year, <laughs> you know, like maybe not though. Is it? I don't know. Uh Could be. Yeah, but I can't imagine it would be too much. Oh, okay, Disney's annual revenue. I don't know what I was looking at before. Maybe it was Walt Disney Co. Is the that thing Disney? is, it's fucked because Disney's revenue also pays back into Florida's taxes. Right. Yeah. So, okay, Disney's revenue was $67 billion in uh, 2020. Wow. Which was a 6% decline. Yeah. Because of the pandemic. No, sorry. 2021 was 67 billion. 2020 was 60 billion. So it's around 70 billion, right? Yeah. Florida 
in 2020 brought in $186 billion in local and state taxes. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. So they have like three times as many lawyers. Mm-hmm. But the... <laughs> three times as many lawyers. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't th- I think the go- government jobs kind of like uh, <laughs> cap out at a certain amount of money. Yeah, yeah, they have a certain amount of money, but they have more lawyers. So yeah, yeah. You know, that? Yeah. Man so man. they're like, they're like, we can have a thousand lawyers, but we're only paying them ninety thousand a year. And then yeah. Disney, Disney's like, we have a hundred lawyers, but we pay yeah. them seven hundred thousand. One million <laughs> mediocre lawyers <laughs> working government. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's interesting. That's how it goes. Yeah, I don't yes. know. It's this is this is the problem with America, right? Um. Or the beauty of it, <laughs> capitalism, <laughs> capitalism versus government. Yeah, I mean, you have Elizabeth Holmes, mm. right? She's like still fighting. She, I don't think she's in prison yet. She's not. She's still fighting it. Yeah. I, uh, I hope some. I hope something. You know, I'm gonna. I'm gonna bite my tongue, but like, she needs to go to prison. Isn't it so weird? She needs to go to prison. How she's not. What about Sam Bankman Freed? What's the latest on him? Oh, that's true. He's probably still awaiting trial, I would assume, right? I mean, there's just so many people that are getting arrested these days. Elizabeth Holmes, Sam Bankman Freed, Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy. Yeah. Um Yeah, it just goes to show you if you have, if you got enough money, you can avoid uh you can avoid the, the 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 slammer. Yeah, I saw uh, thirty days ago there was an article about him that he's Ooh. allowed Sam Bankman Fried. Okay, he's allowed to use a cell phone without internet as part of his new bail conditions. Like you're gonna nice. give a nerd a cell phone? Yeah. Like how well do you have that blocked off from the internet? Is there some guy checking? Yeah. Like, hey, 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 let hey, me see. Hey, hey. He's probably like, hey, uh, Charles, can you Google something for me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How hey, what does it say? to okay. escape to Mexico. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Can you buy me a flight <laughs> to Mexico? Wasn't he trying to flee? No right? idea. No I idea. I thought I saw that. No, was it was he? Elizabeth Holmes. She was trying to she flee. She was trying to flee? Yeah. Uh-huh. How is she not in prison? I know. It pisses me off so much. Sorry, you deserve to spend at least a year in the slammer. This is ridiculous. I know. Well, she got pregnant, and then she asked for like a conditional like appeal or something. I don't know what it was, but I I think as of a couple weeks ago, she's getting closer. (laughs) Um, she obviously got pregnant on purpose. First off, I mean that's really rude of you to say, Miles. I know. Um, I might get canceled like Don Lemon. Yeah, I like Don Lemon. <laughs> um, so what do you think Tucker's uh, next move is? The uh, Daily Wire? <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he started his own thing. YouTube? Yeah. I think he could probably start his own thing. I feel like... He's going to get a wicked Spotify deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he could. <laughs> no, oh, Rumble. <laughs> or... Uh, Bumble. Was it, was it uh, Truth Social? <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is a Truth Social exclusive. Oh, that would be horrible. Yeah, I feel like he's. I feel like he'll. He'll. I mean, what did um, Megyn Kelly do? I thought she went over to like MSNBC or something like that. Right. And then she didn't. It, w- it didn't work out there. I don't know what she's doing now. What, what was it again? Did she leave or did she get fired? I can't remember. I don't know. I think she left. I don't really pay attention to that stupid shit to be honest with you like newscasting celebrities or like who i don't know uh she has a, um for youtube thing a, a talk show and a podcast of course i'm surprised tucker does tucker have a podcast i mean he had like a thousand shows on fox yeah, and fox uh nation fox isn't that nation. the streaming yeah fox nation not that i watched any of them that was a bold move. That's yeah. like most of their viewers right there. It's still, Gone. yeah, I heard that their ratings since two days ago <laughs> have been horrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, people are just boycotting it for you know a week, and then they'll come back. I just guess. just like they did when when Fox turned on Donald Trump. I mean, what are they gonna? What are, what is everybody in the Bible Belt gonna have constantly in the background of their home now? Yeah, exactly. They're gonna boycott it just like they're boycotting Bud Light. Yeah, Bud Light said sorry. Yeah, they're gonna drink Bud Light again. It's fucking Bud cheap. Light is good. I'm sorry. I like drinking it. Here's the thing: if you're buying Bud Light on the U, on the regular, there's only a couple other beers that you can buy on the regular that cheap. Yeah, that's true. And arguably, won't taste like Bud Light, right? Yeah, yeah. they just don't. I mean, Bud Light tastes the way it does. It's, it has this. It's, it's yeah. consistently Bud Light. It yeah. always tastes like Bud Light. The one in the can's better. Just saying. Yeah. Yep. You, if you drink Coors, it has a different taste. In my opinion, it can taste almost completely different. Yeah. So I wouldn't go from drinking Bud Light my whole life to drinking like Rolling Rock or something. Yeah, I know. That's true. That's a good point. A lot of people are like, man, they get that foam, not, not that FOMO, but they're just like, it's not the same. It's like if you jerk off every day yeah. and then you just stop. And then you just stop and you're like, man, I really wish I could <laughs> jerk off right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty much the That's same. That's basically. Thing. Also, Bud Light has got a new audience. <laughs> you know, no. that small one percent of the population, or something like that. That's but but trans. they don't though, because how 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 mu- how many trans people are there? Like, what percentage of the know. population? Is it seems trans? like a lot, right? I think I actually well, looked I think this it's up. A symptom where it's it's just like everybody's angry or something, so it gains a lot of attention. I think um, I remember that I uh, we brought this up. Yeah, I think so. Um, once about it was like I can't remember who said it, but basically he was like uh, talking to a politician, and he goes, "Why are people so focused on the? Why are politicians so focused on trans rights and stuff um, when there's so many problems in America? Right? Like, yeah, be." be focused on it in part, right? Mm-hmm. There should be representation for anyone, but why is it such a huge thing, mm-hmm. right? And I think the obvious answer is because like the media talks about it, uh, like the uh, the opposite people are angry about it and they make noise, right? But uh, I remember, and he was saying it's such a small amount of people. And then uh, I think it was like, um, I looked it up and it, it was a lot more people than I thought. I, I, yeah. So Pew Research Center, hmm. is it a good one it. or bad one? Never heard of it. Uh, let us know. This is five percent of young adults are transgender. Gotcha. And a, the, a, a study from uh, I don't know who, who published this uh, said that one approximately one point six million people over the age of thirteen identify as transgender. As trans. Huh. Um, no idea. I mean, like, you could argue, like, if you're discriminated, you know, it's a bigger issue. Like, nobody should be discriminated, and we're going to, no issues are more important <laughs> yeah. until that's fixed, right, type of thing. I mean, any, except for uh, hunger. Anyone who's wrong feels kids. that way, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, the homeless problem in America, uh, yeah. some would argue, is much worse of a problem. Yeah. And that does, is that's not something that people can get upset at or react hard to, you know. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, and get popularized. Politicians don't really talk about it a little bit more recently because of how bad it's gotten in places like L.A. and San Francisco and even yeah. Denver. Yep. Um, but it's still <clears throat> like. People just point that out. It's so bad. It's so bad. San yeah. Francisco, so much crime. It's so bad. But nobody's saying this is what we're going to, you know, no politicians like, we're going to fix this. Yeah. They're just saying, we're going to fix the crime. We're going to put more police mm-hmm. on the street. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, but what about like more crime happening? You know, <laughs> like people are going to commit crimes whether you have police or not. They're just there to try to try to uh, fix it. Like, a, you know, band, put a band aid on it. Yeah. Who knows how to fix that problem, man? I know. I don't. That's why I'm running for the mayor of Denver. Lone Tree. Lone Tree, which has like no homeless people. 
<laughs> exactly. There are a couple there are a few. next there to the highway. Few. Yep. Sometimes. Sometimes. From nine to five, yeah. Monday through Friday. Also, we have a Walmart. Do you? Yes. Where is it at? It's near 470 over by Brothers and... Is that Lone Tree? It's basically <laughs> Highlands or Edge. <laughs> it's like the Edge. Yeah. <laughs> Barely. What if Lone Tree, like, redistrict, you know, <laughs> Just the poor area. Their, their, their area around the Walmart. They're like, yeah, we're just going to loop around this. It becomes so unincorporated. Quick. I think they can do that. Yeah, they um, can. No, but I think they they like they probably like the tax money from the Walmart. Yeah, Denver County did that with the airport. Hmm. Smart move. Smart yeah, move. because then now they collect taxes from it. So why? Mm-hmm. And they have jurisdiction over it. Yeah, but they have to. Um, like they the have mayor? to fund it too, right? Yeah, but that thing funds itself, dude. Think no, it's the biggest gener- revenue generator in the state. Mm, so it's one of those things that, um, like in Lone Tree, we have the arts center. And when I looked at the profit that the county makes or the city makes, uh, they make like a million dollars a year or something like that. Wow. I don't know if it, so it was that much. they into the community? Sure. They put rocks on the sidewalk so homeless people can't ca- camp there. There's a lot of parks. There's a lot There's of There's no parks. homeless people. That's true. <laughs> The parks are pretty nice. Uh, actually, they could do more about like car theft. Just saying. They could. <laughs> I know somebody who got their car stolen in Lone Tree. Oh, do you? Not too long ago. <laughs> pretty crazy. <laughs> I also know someone who's not me. Um, they park in the same garage as me, though. Oh, really? And they yeah. got their car stolen? Yeah. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> Yeah, it was it's like two weeks academic. before. It was like a couple weeks before. It should have been the writing on the wall for you. Yeah. Well, they didn't tell us. Damn. Yeah. Wow, I nice only story. found out because the maintenance guy who was showing me the video camera of my car getting stolen was like, damn, that's the same guy who stole <laughs> the car like two weeks ago. And I was like, damn. Thank you for letting that slip. Yeah, thank you for not putting up wanted <laughs> posters like a real person would. So then I sent an email to the the management. Yeah, and I was like, uh, "Unacceptable." I'm kind of angry at you yeah. guys, and their That's response fun. was basically like, "Deal with it." Fuck you. We don't have to tell you. Did they say fuck you. No, they didn't. But they said it figuratively. I oh, got you. Like, dear Miles, up yours. Yeah. They said, if you want to know, then you can uh, request a report from the Lone Tree Police Department. Wow. Um, I, and, don't sh- I don't have to tell you shit. And uh, it was like a month before that, I got an email that said, hey, residents, please stay in your uh, apartments mm. because there was a firearm incident. So it's a bad place to live. I think you need to go down to that big old hot tub and take a big old poop. I should. Yep. You know, it closes at 10 p.m. during the week. I should stay until mm. 11. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be mad. Yeah, you're not allowed to have alcohol I'll at it take either. That. I'm a, I'm a bring oh, a yeah? white, white claw. Oh, my God. You bring a white claw and come in at like 10.01. Yeah. You should be like, what are you going to do about it? And I'm going to bring, actually, I'm going to bring a white claw and a Bud Light in a bottle. Ooh, because you can't have glass like the, the glass yeah. yeah you can't have the glass yeah you're like dang i know this isn't as good as the can version of bud light <laughs> but here we are try to stop me i know i'm a bad boy but deal with it yeah. deal with it you got problems now you got I'm problems now lone tree damn and then i'm gonna break the bottle on the ground so yeah. it shatters everywhere, but I'm gonna clean it up after so that nobody cuts their feet. Ooh, but they think that the, there there's glass in there, so they gotta yeah. you know to drain the thing anyways. Right. Yeah. I'll probably bring one of those fake glass bottles. I think you should. Yeah. One of those sugar, the sugar so like just they, melts. they do in the in the movies. Yeah. 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 So so by the time they come out, you know, with a with a, a gun. Yeah. What? They're like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, they got to enforce the rule somehow. Actually, uh, another incident, by the way, um, yeah, maybe I shouldn't. Uh, there was another incident that happened uh, where I was waiting in the lobby because the the UPS driver called me because mm. he had to deliver. No, it was he was picking up something 
you know, sometimes when you return up, when you return something to like Amazon or some other, yeah. the UPS driver can pick it up from you. Yeah. So he had our phone number. So he called and he said, Hey, I'm across the street delivering packages. I'll be there in a few minutes if you want to come down and bring that to me. So I was down there and I was waiting in the lobby for him to come in. And I heard this woman come into the lobby and uh, ask the person in the office, Hey, just curious. Uh, I'm kind of nosy. What's going on? And I'm like, what do you mean? What's going on? And the woman in the office goes, oh, yes, um, two guys in ski masks followed someone in through the gates. And they're currently trapped in one of the stairwells. Oh, shit. And so she was like, stay away from stairwell three or whatever it was. Dang. Yeah. And I am sitting there like, fuck. I just go through stairwell. Yeah. I text Sarah. I was like, hey, lock the door. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, code red, code red. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm like, I, only I knew that. This lady and me heard this. Mm. No one else was told. So what you did is you took that package and you like fashioned it as a weapon yeah. and took care of it yourself. And I went to the stairwell and I took advantage of those guys. Wow, what does that mean? I took Miles? their wallets. You took their ski masks. Virginity? No. Okay. All right. Well, I didn't want to go there, but you did. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I mean, just goes to show you, you could live in a nice town and yeah. also live in a shithole. Things happen. Okay. That's things, a lot of things in a couple thing, months. Well, I mean, uh, is it, it? Have you? Have you ever? Have you ever had your car stolen? No, but I've had it fucked up before and broken into. Yeah, and then what did you do after? I moved uh-huh. to a safer place. <laughs> <laughs> I dealt with it, okay? Yeah. What do you want me to say? Actually, I got a garage. They gave me a garage after that happened. And I was like, oh. Oh, no, I have a, a garage. Just a fix. I park well, in it. You don't have like a secured garage. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> they don't sell those, so I can't. Yeah, well, you know, you need to find yourself a place that has that. How about, you know what, that's it. I'm buying a house tomorrow. You know what? I think you should. Full price. 8% over interest at, rate. 15% over asking. Or under. Ooh, <laughs> damn. I did hear that prices went down. Supposedly. 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 No, they definitely did. They definitely did. Yeah, I calculated it. How much? Ten dollars. Wow. That's like point zero 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 nine one one two five percent. No, actually that's an interesting thing that's happening in the housing market. Mm. When you have the US, right? Yeah. Uh so most of the places on the East Coast have actually increased in price this year. Okay. Except for some places like New York City. Yep. And most of the western half of the U.S. have decreased in value. Oh. In particular, the cities so like Denver, L.A., San Francisco. Okay. Yeah. Why is that? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I, w- I think probably people want to leave the city, mm. you know? Um, and there's not make many big cities over on the East Coast besides the aforementioned. Yeah, I mean... Uh, yeah, like for instance, Florida, you have uh, Miami that probably had a decrease, yeah, imagine, uh, just because it was already pretty expensive, sure. There. Um, but the rest of Florida is not really that populated, yeah, so and they they did have a lot of cheap land, you can move into the swamp, you can, you can and you can also live near the beach and get sick of going to the beach because everyone else goes to the beach and mm. it's hot as hell and you go there and you sweat and you get sandy and then you go in the water to cool off except when you get out of the water you feel really salty and you just want to take a shower except the shower at the beach doesn't work so you have to go home you get sand in your car you get mm. the seats nasty you feel gross yeah. the whole time you got a sunburn because you forgot to put sunscreen on or you mm. forgot to reapply it after you went in the water mm. and then you're like why did I move here? What they don't tell you is you can take that sand home with you if you want. Yeah, you're allowed to. You can bring a bucket. Yeah. Just also, what no they don't tell it. you, it tastes real good. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, let us know in the comment section what you think of the Florida sand. And yeah. How it tastes. And also, we didn't find this out on purpose, yeah. obviously. Obviously, we've tried it before. I wouldn't <laughs> recommend it if I haven't already like experienced it. Yeah. It's got a saltiness to it. It's pretty good. Um, I think this is a good place to end. Wow. This feels somewhat bittersweet. But at the same time, I'm really, really excited for season three and everything that's going to bring. I'm not. Miles is Miles is neutral. I quit. Bye. He quit. He's um, he actually can't quit because he signed a billion year contract with Fox News. I took the boilerplate contract that they give the Scientologists when they sign up. It's a billion years. You basically can't quit on me. And there's no out clause. It's basically just suicide. I'll kill you. <laughs> uh, well, there it is, folks. There it is in all its glory. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching on YouTube. If you want to check out what Miles and Sarah are doing, check out Adventuring Guys on Instagram. They're almost at 100K. No, we're at 100K. You hit 100K? 101, baby. 101. Oh, shit. Let's go. They did it. Check out our adventures. Going on a lot of cool stuff this summer. Yep. You're going to see some of the Canadian Rockies. Yeah. If you thought the Colorado Rockies were good, they suck. Well, okay. Let's not shit on the Colorado Rockies like that hard. But let's talk about the baseball team. Oh, yeah, yeah. True that. (laughs) I support that. But um good stuff. Check out their blog adventuringguys.com. Um we got some exciting new podcasts coming up at the beginning of season 3 here on the at the Lucky Duck. I'll make an exciting announcement about a new audio drama podcast from the Lucky Broadcasting Production Company. Very excited to announce that. Stay tuned and as always be kind to everybody and we love you. Ah D-O-S. D-O-S. Go to Bye. bed.